Asian scope. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Asian film fanatic. In my previous video, I reviewed the fantastic Akira Kurosawa movie, Rashomon, a film featuring mainly four conflicting accounts of the same criminal event. In this video, I'm going to dive deeper into this jungle of confusion and try to make sense of it all. I'll make my own biased, useless, amateur fanboy attempt to reason out what I most likely think happened here. In the following video, we'll be peering over these twisted hellish visions of immoral self-embellishment, writhing in agony, questioning, digging deep into these deceptions. From the bottommost pits to the most crucial cores of the primal nature from that very elusive essence which we identify as the human soul. By the end of it, will I discover truth? Or will I lose my sanity? This is Rashomon Into the Grove of Insanity, an Asian film fanatic featurette. Much of Rashomon's original narrative is based on the short story In a Grove by Rinosuke Akutagawa. In that version, Akutagawa wrote of seven testimonies from the woodcutter, priest, policeman, mother in law, Tajimaru the bandit, the woman, and the samurai husband. There are a few differences from the movie, including character insights and a more ambiguous ending. But overall, I would say it captures most of the story's spirit. In the movie, all the characters give testimonies, but there is no mother-in-law. The only ones that are significant, however, are from four. Tajimaru, the samurai, the wife, and the woodcutter. To loosely review, the woodcutter gives an initial account of stumbling upon the woman's hat the man's hat, a rope, an amulet case, and the body. He denies ever seeing the sword or anything. For Tajimaru, after seeing the woman pass by, he gets filled with desire. Without ever intending to kill, he tricks, ambushes, and ties the samurai up. Tajimaru runs back and proudly shows the woman her helpless husband. She promptly attacks the bandit with a hidden dagger. Tajimaru restrains her with a forceful kiss. After dropping the dagger and embracing, she demands that either he or her husband must die. Confidently, Tajimaru releases the samurai and slays him in a lively sword fight. Back at the courthouse, he compliments the samurai and the battle, but lost the woman. The woman testifies Tajimaru forced himself on her, laughs at them, and just runs away. Focusing on her husband's hateful gaze, her feelings shift from love to shock to shame to anguish. Grabbing her dagger, her emotional wrestling continues. Wanting to kill herself, then her husband, she approaches him, entranced, then faints. She wakes up shocked to see the dagger in her husband's chest. Presumably leaving the dagger behind, she fails to commit suicide in the pond. Through a medium, the samurai says his wife agreed to go with the bandit but demanded her husband be killed. Surprised by this, the bandit asks the samurai whether to kill her or let her go. The man is so touched he'd be willing to pardon the bandit. But before he can answer, the woman escapes. Unable to capture her, the bandit frees the samurai and leaves. Filled with sorrow, the man takes his wife's dagger and plunges it into his breast. As darkness envelops, he feels someone remove the dagger from his heart. After some prodding, we learn the woodcutter has witnessed most of it. He sees Tajimaru desperately begging for the woman's acceptance, but she grabs the dagger and cuts her husband free, wanting them to settle it like men. When they both reject her, she shames them into a nervous duel. At the end, the samurai is killed by the bandit's blade. The wife runs away, and Tajimaru leaves with the samurai's sword. But we soon learn the woodcutter's secret guilt implicates he stole the dagger. Before starting our analysis, there's a few cinematic cues that are interesting to note. 
There's something to be said about the depiction of nature in this film. In a few scenes, the clouds, the sky, sun, wind, and rain are intentionally accentuated. Even the light and darkness of the shadows cast from the dancing leaves were deliberate. It's been speculated that these elements denote a contrasting awareness of the omnipresent truth and lies to the characters involved. Sometimes it seems to suggest lies. Other times, they just seem to contribute an active atmosphere of desire, confusion, or dense entanglement. But even though they can hint or symbolize a variety of things, I couldn't get a feeling I was getting a consistent sense of determination throughout the movie. Does it just apply to select moments around nature or the whole scene? To me, it wasn't a dead giveaway for conclusive interpretations. In my examinations, I'm going to put most of my judgmental faith in testimonial consistency and character integrity. The more consistent the testimony between witnesses, the more likely I'll grant it true. The more familiar we are with the character's motives, the more likely we're able to determine what's true or false. When these both line up, I think we can conjure up a solid hypothesis. Keep in mind, these values are still only my subjective interpretations. Looking at these characters, here's my distillation of their bias and motives. Cocky and confident, Tajimaru the unscrupulous bandit seems most likely to lie or brag, but I'd say he mainly cares about his conquest over the man and woman. It's really about the woman. Sad, spiteful, and bitter, the woman's feelings mostly revolve around her husband and being desired. In the grove, the samurai depicts himself as sorrowful, but through the medium, he's filled with hatred. He seems to care most about the loss and betrayal from his wife, as well as his honor. The woodcutter cares most about hiding the dagger theft. He doesn't want to get involved. These characteristics were not only derived from their testimony, but from how they told it. The premise of Rashomon is each character feeds their pride and ego. Whether it be truth or lie, their statements, internal feelings, and external actions, I believe, are driven by these qualities. Let's examine a few of the primary accusations in the movie. The Samurai's Death If there's one fact we can easily conclude, it's that the Samurai was killed. Samurai killed. Fact. But how? Murder or suicide? Sword or dagger? If we can conduct an autopsy on the body, we would no doubt be able to determine if the samurai died by sword or dagger or both. There could be more to the story, but we can only base our thoughts on what we're presented with. Keeping track of the dagger, in all four accounts, the dagger gets stuck in the ground. The samurai, woman, and woodcutter then suggest it ended up residing in the samurai's chest. Once the woodcutter's sword fighting testimony is revealed to be false, only the bandit supports death by sword. In the end, both murder weapons end up missing or sold, leaving room for uncertainty. Based on this, I'll still say the samurai died by dagger, rather than sword. Killed by dagger. Likely. Killed by sword. Unlikely. Murder or suicide. Tajimaru and the wife suggest the samurai died by murder. If the samurai died by dagger, Tajimaru's killing by sword is false. He even said he hadn't intended to kill the samurai. The wife may have more credibility, but in her version, the bandit just runs away laughing. I don't think Tajimaru would leave them alone for laughs, and I doubt he would stand by watching while the wife kills her husband. But it could have happened swiftly. I'm going to call the wife murdering the husband plausible. Wife murders husband. Plausible. The samurai says he killed himself after Tajimaru loses the woman. His is the only testimony directly supporting suicide, but his sorrow is consistent with that. And it's the only instance where we actually see the samurai get stabbed. Suicide. Plausible. 
Even though they're both plausible, I still would lean towards the wife as the murderer. It's almost like she makes a defense for involuntary manslaughter. Out of everyone's testimony, she has the least to gain from confessing what she did. Sword fight If the samurai was killed by dagger, was there even a sword fight? In three versions, Tajimaru gains possession of the samurai's sword and leaves in possession. With the woodcutter's false testimony on the fatal sword fight, that only leaves the bandit vouching it happened. <laughs> In the wife and samurai's version, there was no sword fight. I think that's most plausible. In terms of a non-fatal sword fight, I'd say that's also plausible. But because the bandit is a bragger and the woodcutter was hiding his theft, I think it's less likely. In terms of a fatal sword fight, because the samurai was killed by a dagger, I'll say this is unlikely. Wife violated. Willingly or unwillingly? Hey, this is a decent movie. Film censorship was still strict in 1950. Any notion of rape is still strictly an off-screen idea. We don't even see any clothing removed. All we're actually shown is the bandit's forceful kiss but everyone suggests she's been stained. Maybe that's all it takes to be ruined, a forceful kiss. What do I know? Stained, likely. Now did the wife embrace the bandit at that moment? Only Tajimaru suggests this. Willingly yielded, unlikely. The wife, samurai, and woodcutter suggest she unwillingly yielded. Unwillingly yielded, likely. It's interesting to know, every testimonial picks up after this moment, suggesting everything that took place before this was either generally true or less important. Dagger theft. Obviously, the woodcutter's false testimony and guilty expressions suggest he stole the dagger from the samurai's chest. And when confronted with this accusation at the end, he doesn't dispute it. Dagger theft, likely. Secondary accusations. You or my husband? Did the wife turn her husband and bandit on each other? In some form, whether it's you or my husband, or kill him, the bandit, samurai, and woodcutter suggest this. Bandit slash you or my husband, likely. But how they responded is under dispute. Spousal betrayal. It's also supported in all testimonies that at some point, the wife turns on the husband. These instances and others make the husband feel betrayed by his wife. Husband is betrayed. Likely. But at some point, does the wife feel betrayed by the husband's rejection? Only in the wife and woodcutter's version. I'll say it's plausible. Wife is betrayed. Plausible. Bandit and Samurai Bromance Based on the testimony from Tajimaru, the Samurai, and Woodcutter, I think there are moments that Tajimaru and the Samurai liked or respected each other. Tajimaru compliments the Samurai's fighting, and the Samurai considered pardoning the Bandit. The Woodcutter shows them mutually rejecting the woman. Bandit and Samurai Bromance, likely. Who left and when? Thinking generally, the only credible scenarios I can imagine Tajimaru running away is after a sword fight or chasing after the woman. The Samurai most likely died by dagger, so there wasn't a fatal sword fight. I doubt Tajimaru lost a sword fight because most testimonies suggest he ended up with both swords. She's more interested in the wife than killing the samurai. So I think at some point the wife probably bolted after feeling rejected and Tajimaru chased after her. What I think may have happened. After all this examining, it's impossible to conclude what really happened. To tie things together, I had to make a combination of logical and creative assumptions myself. There's a lot more to consider and examine, but before this gets too long, I think those are the allegations that are worth addressing directly. Instead of going over the rest of every detail, I'll offer my own re-edited version of what I think really happened. 
We establish the couple loves each other. The bandit sees and lusts for the woman. After tricking and binding the samurai, he gets and shows the wife. The wife attacks the bandit with a hidden dagger. The bandit stains the wife. She drops the dagger. The husband internally grieves over his violated wife. After Tajimaru lets go, he takes the samurai's sword. The wife runs and embraces her husband. The samurai remains cold towards his wife. The broken wife only sees hatred from him, and she cannot bear it. She runs to the bandit, begging one must die. Not intending to kill, Tajimaru rejects the wife's demand. The wife grabs the dagger and runs to her husband, cutting him free. The husband openly rejects his wife, and the bandit shares similar sentiments. The wife breaks down, shaming and scorning both men, especially the husband. She goads them into a sword fight, but they refuse. Desperately, the wife's surprise attacks the husband, killing him with the dagger. She quickly runs away from the scene. Tajimaru chases after her in pursuit, but ends up losing her. The end. If the writer's premise is that there is a blatant lie in every one of these testimonies, which of these lies are the most flagrant? Can we believe any of them? One thing that's helpful to remember is what the characters' motivations are. What do they care most about preserving? What would they wish to have happened? How would they benefit? What would please them the most? From this, I would say Tajimaru lies about the wife's embrace and the victorious sword fight. For the woman, Tajimaru's quick exit and fainting alibi sounds dishonest. For the samurai, the wife submitting to Tajimaru and perhaps the suicide are lies. And for the woodcutter, the dagger theft is his most obvious deception. So that's my theory. A little bit of truth and a little bit of lies. Do I think this is 100% accurate? Not even. Well that's the beauty of subjectivity and the constructive genius of the writing. If we were told everything that really happened, it wouldn't be half as interesting as it is in contradiction. There's just enough similar elements in place to show likelihood, but also enough credible elements to make a counterpoint. An intrinsic quality of Rashomon is not everything is going to make perfect sense. It's fascinating to see different reasons, interpretations, and theories about what took place, even the wild ones. I hope you enjoyed my take on Rashomon. If you disagree, that's perfectly fine by me. I know, there are a lot of kind, smart, and wonderful people out there. Especially on the internet. And your thoughts are as good as mine, if not better. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. I'd be happy to read it. I'm the Asian Film Fanatic, and I'll see you later. <laughs>